Okay, this is part one of a three-part video series on setting up SharePoint for a test environment for you to use. So the first thing we're going to talk about is setting up Hyper-V because we're going to do this as a virtual server on your machine. So let me show you my specs on my machine really quick. I have 8 gigs of RAM, a 6-core, 3 gigahertz processor, and it's pretty decent. It's not a super fast machine, but it's got a nice little video card and everything else, so it works pretty well for me. You want to make sure you have plenty of RAM and a, a, at least a dual-core processor. You can do it with less, but I would recommend a little bit beefier system. So first thing you want to do is turn Windows features on or off. This is how you get to it in Windows 8. If you have Windows 7... Um, you know, it might be a different, you might have to go to control panel and add remove programs and go to Windows features. So the key thing to remember here is that you must have uh, a professional or greater version of Windows as your operating system. So for me, I have Windows 8 professional, Windows 7 professional, either one of those with ultimate will include the Hyper-V platform and features. You'll want to check the box by Hyper-V and click OK and make sure all these other options are selected as well. The other thing to keep in mind is that if this option is grayed out or not, not uh, you're not able to select it, that means you need to go into your BIOS, uh, reboot your machine, go into your BIOS, usually by pushing Delete or F2, and then go in and enable virtualization for your machine. Once you do that and click OK, it'll run through and install Hyper-V and then prompt you to reboot, and then you should be able to go into Hyper-V. So I've already done that, so I'll show you what Hyper-V looks like. Hyper-V Manager is what you'll be using to create these virtual machines. We just need to make one, and the first thing we want to do is create a virtual switch. That virtual switch will allow your virtual machines to connect to your existing network adapter. So let me do this really quick. I've already created one, but I'll remove that and show you how to make one. So you'll click on new virtual network switch, click on external and click create virtual switch. Give it a name. I just call mine internet and select your network adapter and then click apply. Click OK. So now we've created our virtual switch. The next thing you want to do is download a trial of server 2012. And what you'll do is you'll go to your Internet Explorer as it crashes and go to Google or your favorite search engine and just type in server 2012 trial and that'll take you to the Windows Server download page. When you get to this page, down here where it says select a version, you want to download the VHD. That stands for virtual hard drive and that's what we attach to virtual machines. So download that and when you do, you'll get a program with an icon that looks like this. I renamed it to Server 2012 to make it easy, but what it does is it creates a virtual hard drive for you. So you can run this um, utility as many times as you want to create as many virtual hard drives as you want. So if you need to make three or four servers, just run it four times. It'll expand out for those virtual hard drives. I've already done it, so we'll cancel that. Once it's completed, it will give you a folder that looks like this and you'll end up with a file name that looks like this, okay? So you'll have an expanded VHD folder with a long file name, and it's about eight gigs. So I'm gonna rename this to SharePoint. Oops, I'll call that SharePoint, not Share. Okay, so we've created our virtual switch, and we've downloaded the VHD and expanded it. So now we'll create a new virtual machine. So we'll click next on the first dialog and give this server a name. I'm going to call it SharePoint. This will not be the machine name. This is just a name in Hyper-V to um, give you a descriptive name for that virtual machine. For memory, I recommend at least two gigs of RAM, if not more. You can do um, three. So I don't know what three times 1024, 3072, I think. We'll give it three gigs of RAM and then click next and go to configure networking and click on internet. Click next and then it's going to ask you to connect to a virtual hard disk. Luckily we just did that. So we'll click on the second option for use an existing virtual hard disk. Click on browse and go to the location that you extracted that VHD to. Click on next and finish. It will create everything, attach it to the network driver and 
power the machine on. So then what you'll do is you'll right click the machine and click start. So you can see it's starting the machine and it's all set up and ready to go. So we're going to give that just a couple of seconds to, to turn on. And this is going to be the longest time it takes for your virtual machine to boot up and get to a usable, uh, a usable state. It's going to run through as though you had just installed Windows Server 2012 and make you go through the configuration process. It'll ask you to uh, agree to a license. It'll ask you to um, you know, put in your uh, geography settings or your location and regional settings. And then it'll ask you to create an administrator password. So you'll want to do all of that, and then it'll have you reboot it and then log in. And so once you've done that, you'll get to the desktop. I'm going to run through all that. It's really self-explanatory, not hard to do. So I'll pause this video until we get to the point where we're at the desktop and I'll show you where to go from there. Also, while this is running, you want to make sure whenever you give um, RAM to your virtual machine, you want to make sure I showed you my system properties earlier. I have eight gigs of RAM. You want to make sure whatever RAM you give to that virtual machine you can do without because as you can see my memory usage now is five gigs so three of those gigs are actually allocated to the virtual machine and my host machine which is this machine we're running Hyper-V on is not able to use that RAM so even though I have six processors and eight gigs of RAM one of those processors one of the virtual processors and three gigs of my RAM is allocated to this machine <laughs> so Make sure you can do without it. Also, on the note of performance, if you want to, you can go into your settings and add more than one processor to the machine. So you can add, uh, it's got to be shut down first, um, but you can add up to you know six of your uh, processors there. So that's just something to keep in mind too. So we're waiting for this thing to finish booting up. I'll come back whenever we're ready to go. Also, while we're still waiting, sorry, I keep jumping in. Um, you can set a lot of things for this virtual machine. You can add another drive. So you could add a DVD drive if you wanted to. You could attach your system DVD drive. I have one on my machine here. So you can attach that. You can create multiple network adapters for it. So if you have a couple of machines, you can create another virtual switch and allow them to communicate with each other. If you want to, you can create a virtual floppy disk, a VFD file, um, and you can go down into smart. There's a lot of stuff here for Hyper-V that is not covered in the scope of this video, but that's, that's all I have on that. Just wanted to let you know there's a lot of features there. Take a look around on the internet and see if you can find some more information on those. And it looks like we're ready to accept license terms and set our regional settings and next step it will probably ask me for administrator passwords so go ahead and create one of those and it's important to remember what we're doing with this server is creating a test environment or a development environment this is not for production if you're in production and you're setting up a production environment stop watching this video because this is not the way to do it um, you'll want to get with your information architect at your organization and possibly reach out to a Microsoft partner for best practices relating to SharePoint deployments for production environments. This is just strictly to mess around in, play with stuff, and you know, if you break something, no big deal. Okay, once it finalizes your settings after you enter the administrator password, it's going to run through this process of booting up and then it'll say push control alt, delete to sign in in hyper v whenever you have a virtual machine window open there's a little button up here for control alt, delete put in your administrator password and we should be taken somewhat quickly to the desktop so at this point you have a virtual machine set up a virtual server that is running server 2012 and that's what we're going to use to install SharePoint Server on.